This is crazy. Miss Dory, we cannot find him anywhere. I don't know, man. We hiked everywhere and he was like nowhere. It was We're such the a forest long hike. Oh, okay, okay but but I, I it's been crazy. I, I mean, know. I don't understand where he could be. I'm, I'm like, almost scared because I can't find people. What and... if he got eaten by a bear? <laughs> a bear. No, we don't take Coach D. We don't. Whoa, hey, Coach D. Hey. hey, hey. Oh my gosh, we were so yes, excited. Yes. We were lost. It was it was awful. It was awful. There were trees, there were forests, it was madness. Gone for several oh, weeks. You were only gone for a week. Yeah. We were gone. We were, we were off the Ooh, reservation. That's a long time. That's Woo. Pancakes, huh? Yeah. Really? Pancakes. Uh -huh. like, and chocolate. I don't Delicious. know what the come. Like, you put the, it together. And ah, boom. what do you got? I like it. Is this at the start? Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, we're yeah. going to have a fun time this week, though. That's why I came. I was <laughs> glad we finally found you, Coach Yay. D. Yeah. But we're going to have an awesome time talking about you. Know Jesus! What? That kind of reminds me of our lesson today. Our lesson's on serving Jesus and ah, telling sure. others about Jesus. You know what? Coach D was lost, and then you were found. And we were... And, and we were lost, and then we were found. I like the found. Yeah. I don't like being lost. And you know what? People, yeah. When people don't know Jesus, they're lost. Awesome. And then when they come to know Jesus, they're found. That's great. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this week. We're going to have all sorts of fun, and you'll see Coach D again, and just have a great time with object lessons. All right, let's go. <laughs> hey, kids, it's Miss Melanie, and thank you so much for joining us for another week for Hope Kids. We still miss you so much, and we cannot wait to see you in person. Today's scripture memory verse is um, Galatians 5.19, and it just says, serve one another in love. And that's so important for us to remember because Jesus was the ultimate servant, and we are called to be just like Jesus. But the great promise that comes with that is that the Holy Spirit will give you the power to serve others in whatever way that Jesus wants you to. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus, your perfect son, the ultimate service, servant, to die on the cross for our sins. Please help us to serve others just as Jesus did while he was here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, stand up. It's time for praise and worship. Get up and start dancing. You're my calm in the chaos My peace in the war You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are in control You are my every heartbeat Every breath that I breathe You're all I need Every breath.
Well, I got this new pedometer, and I'm trying to get fit, you know? Getting fit, that's yeah. a good thing. They track my steps and how far I run. And, I'm trying to run a mile. What's that called again? A pedometer. A pedometer yeah. tracks your steps. Yeah. It's kind of like God wants us to like go in the whole world. I mean, that's kind of like steps, right? Like moving around and talking to people. Yeah. Sharing with people. Yeah. Huh. Serving. Healthy. Physically, oh, and spiritually fit? Yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool. I wonder if I can put a pedometer on and like track my steps as I go and tell people about Jesus. That would be cool. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Huh. To come up with a new idea, new plan, I like that. But you know, God's asking us to do all sorts of things. Jesus wants us to go out and talk to our friends and family and even people we don't know. Oh yeah, that's he wants cool. us he wants us to go out and serve and tell others about him. So physically fit and spiritually fit, is one like better or like more important than the other, you think? I think both are important. Huh, that's pretty cool. Because I'm more on the spiritual side, I need to work on the physical side. That's why I have this put on order. Yeah. See, I got you one. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That is cool. Mine comes with numbers already on it, so I don't have to do any work. Just kidding. That's really awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks. I'm glad I ran into you today. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay, Ernie, let's go over the checklist. Make sure we've got everything in our backpack. Check. Oh, yeah. Flashlight. Check. Great. Okay. Uh, see, trail mix. Oh, you got to have trail mix. Yeah. Check. Uh, water bottle, dehydration, no more. Check. All right. Uh, field, go oh, field guide for all, spotting all those birds. No, but I have this week's edition of Popular Science Magazine. Uh, Popular Science Magazine? Uh, we're going on a hike, son. And I'm bringing my magazine in case I get bored. Ernie, you won't get bored. This is the forest. It's God's country. You're gonna see all kinds of beauty and wildlife. I am? Certainly. These woods are teaming up with wildlife. What kind of life? Uh, just the usual stuff, you know, squirrels. I like squirrels. Oh, I like squirrels too. Chipmunks and possum. Ooh, the pretty deer. I like deer. Oh, maybe even a big bear. I like, wait, what did you say? I said there might be a bear. Have a good time, Dad. I'll be right here reading popular science. What's the matter? I'm not going out into the woods full of bears. You're not afraid of a little bear, are you? <laughs> no, I'm afraid of being eaten by bears. Ernie, listen. We came out here to do some adventuring. I'm not gonna get the adventure and sitting in a cabin and reading a magazine. There's a beautiful world out there. Come on, God's country. God can keep it. Oh, come on, Ernie. You know, when you're a little older, do you remember, though, when you were a little younger, reading magazines about having adventures? I don't care, so long as I don't get older. Ernie, trust me. You're going to be great, but you're going to be sorry, and you're going to miss it. I don't know, Dad. It still sounds dangerous. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe you. But it can also be the greatest thing, I guess, ever. You're right, I'll give it a try. Who's afraid of a bear anyway? <sighs> Besides, I don't have to run faster than a bear to be safe. Uh, no, you don't. No, I just have to run faster than you. <laughs> For as long as people have been going into the woods, people have been taking hikes. Some like the safety of trails that are marked out for them, and some like to take trails riding horses, Others cra craving real adventure 
adventure, leave the horses and trails and they just explore the deep woods. No, that's not for me. I personally like the trails. Um, I'm scared of poison ivy and I hate spiders, You're but I do like camping. I am. I don't like poison ivy. It scares me. <laughs> All right. So I'm scared of getting it, I should say. All right. So whatever path you may take, it's a much more exciting way to spend time than sitting inside and looking out the window. Hmm. I wish I could take a hike out there, but they're never ever doing anything. You need to get out and explore, right? That's right. So. That's exactly what many Christians choose to do in their spiritual lives. Instead of going out and doing things for Jesus and serving Jesus, we're just content going to church every single Sunday and sitting in our pew, our chairs, and then when we leave, that's all, that's all we do. We just live from Sunday to Sunday, but that's not what serving Jesus is. We need to get out there and tell others about Jesus and do, serving Jesus is about doing. God wants us, does not want us to hide our faith. He needs us to get involved. Early in his ministry, Jesus began preparing his own disciples to take up, take up the work he began, the work he expects us to continue. So let's read in the Bible where Jesus tells us how he sent his disciples out and how they could serve him. Luke 10, one through 17. Jesus sends out his disciples. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Heal the sick and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you now. But if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into its streets and say, we wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. I assure you, even wicked Sodom will be better off than such a town on judgment day. What sorrow awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida? For if the miracles I did in you have been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago, clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their heads to show their remorse. Yes, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on Judgment Day than you. And you, people of Capernaum, will you be honored in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Jesus didn't lie to his followers. He told them they had to go and he told them that it would be challenging, that they would be like lambs among the wolves. Still, Jesus asked them to go and to spread the good news that he had given them, despite all of that. The people returned to Jesus amazed. They shared the good news just as Jesus asked, and they found that all the power Jesus promised them really was theirs. Even the demons submit to us in your name, they said. Jesus sent the 72 out to show them that they could continue his work when he was gone. He also did it to show us that he would give us the power to continue his work as well. The 72 learned three things from their first mission experience. First, they learned that Jesus needed their help. 
the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. He said, Jesus wants his disciples to travel the whole earth, sharing the good news wherever they go. The church is here to help those who believe in Jesus to grow and learn more about him. But if it was never meant to be our hiding place, but it was never meant to be our hiding place, Jesus wants us to go into our communities and the whole world sharing the good news in, in words and in actions. Actions are big. Mm -hmm. We can tell people about Jesus, but we can also serve people. Serve people. A lot of people don't like to serve, mm -hmm. but that's really important. By meeting their needs, showing them that Jesus really loves them by serving as Jesus' hands and feet. The disciples also learned to go in peace. Jesus told them to stay where they were invited and to share the good news with the people willing to listen. God has given us free will. He doesn't force himself on us. It's our choice. And Jesus said, if someone rejects his word, move on. Don't even worry about it. We shouldn't argue with people that might lead to hateful words or action. Be at peace with everyone and share the good news with those who are welcoming to it. The last thing they learned was that Jesus would give them power. Even the demons had submitted to the disciples just as they had to Jesus. That's pretty impressive. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, very much. We sing a song about that. <laughs> it's proof that even when we serve Jesus, he gives us power to stand up to evil and show people that God is the one true God. Whether or not you're an outdoor person, God is calling you to go out. He has enough believers sitting inside already watching the world go by instead of serving it. Don't miss out on the adventure that happens when you step out of your safe place and step into Jesus' calling for your life. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. I just pray that you'll help us serve you in everything that we do, Lord. Even when it's hard, Lord, even when it's trying, Lord, we thank you that you're gonna give us the power, Lord, to tell others about you and help us, help them be able to see you in our lives in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yo, 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 what's up? It's Coach D and it's Minute 20 time. In our object lesson today, we had uh, pedometers. So for our game today, we're gonna to be using pedometers. And each one of our contestants here has a pedometer. And they're gonna see who gets the most steps. It's your turn to win. Yeah, she keeps <laughs> moving to it. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Uh, and Mark, get set. Yeah. 60 seconds for the most. 60 seconds? 60 That's seconds. a minute. Got it. That's a minute. Go, go, go. Faster, 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 faster. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, Jesus. Parker, she. Faster. Parker. You gotta hurry up so I can get these pancakes made. Pancakes? I'm hungry. Who's got it? He's pancakes. I'm hungry and y'all are just. Stop slow. her. Stop her, faster, Parker. Faster, Good job. Faster. I'm still on ADJ. I'm just playing with you. No. The more steps she gets, the more pancakes she gets. Help her out, Parker. Help her out, Parker. Help her out. Parker, Parker's my secret weapon. Up around, Parker. Yeah, she knows. Woo! Oh my How much time God. we got? My goodness, I feel like we're running the marathon. Yeah, uh, you got like 30 seconds. Still got that fish hook in there. Yeah. Good job, good job. Wonder who caught me. Wonder. <laughs> That's not talking about four weeks ago. <laughs> Woo! Hey, she's a pumpkin eater. Parker, faster, yeah. faster, faster. Yeah. Don't worry about that foot, just move that foot. That's where we need to move. Eventually, I'm going to get something here. She's going to fly off. Help her out, Barbara. Like, what you doing? Help her out, Barbara. Oh my gosh. Ten, Come on. Check your time, huh? Nine. All right, brother, man. Eight. Seven. Oh, six. Yeah, you could go. Five. Four. Three. Two. Cool down. Woo. All right, let's see. 
case. How many steps you got? Uh, 200. Next to none. <laughs> 312. And how many you have? 232. Um, oh, man, last oh. place. Monica, you did. Parker's like 400. Oh, man, good job. So let's go make some pancakes. Congratulations, pancakes. Let's go. Woohoo! Okay, keto pancakes. All right, guys, since I won the minute to win it, I'm gonna pray for the country of Ecuador. My dad's always wanted to go to Ecuador, so we're gonna do the next best, the next best thing, which is gonna be praying for it. <laughs> okay, let's pray. God, thank you for the country of Ecuador. God, thank you that I can just stand here and stand in for that country. God, I pray that you just, um, Bless Ecuador, and I pray that you just help them with their finances if their government is struggling. God, I pray that you protect them. I pray that you just um, send good doctors and just send good workers to Ecuador. God, I pray that you just bless all the people there, especially the kids and the mothers and the fathers. I pray that you just um, put your hedge of protection around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everybody. Today, we are gonna be making crafts with things you can find on a hike. This is a pine cone bird feeder, and later on, I'll show you how to make, trace a leaf with crowns and paper. <laughs> okay, so with the bird feeder, all you need is pine cones, peanut butter, and bird seed. And to do that, <laughs> You just put the peanut butter on the little spikes of the pine cone. And then when you put the peanut butter on it, spread it out and then just sprinkle the bird feet on. There you got it. And put a string on top to hang it in the tree. For your second craft, you will need to find some Green leaves preferably, but if you have brown leaves only, make sure they're not crunchy. <laughs> All you need are leaves, a piece of paper, any color. I have a white piece, because that's the preferred method. And then crayons. Put the leaf under your paper. Make sure you press on it hard and then just color over it. <laughs> you should be able to see the little veins of the leaf. Make sure you're pressing hard. <laughs> I think I should have got a smaller leaf. Let's say our memory verse one more time. Serve one another in love. Galatians 5, 19. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's uh, lesson and um, just an awesome time that we had. And we really enjoy making these uh, videos for you and uh, enjoy uh, hearing back from you feedback. But well, hopefully we'll see you soon so you can tell us all about how you enjoyed them. But guys, here, here's, the, here's the bottom line. You can't be a spectator in life. Don't sit on the sidelines, it's important. You know, watching things from the sidelines sometimes is different. But when you're a participator and helping others and just telling people about Jesus and serving yourself, it's important to serve in the community, uh, in church here, get involved, especially as you grow up, opportunity to do more things, especially in children's church and other programs in the church. And you know, like just like that pedometer, when you look back and you see what you've done, how far you've gone, you'll be amazed at everything that you've achieved and just how awesome you can be useful in God's house. So I hope you enjoy this week and we'll see you next time. Here's some. Good game. Oh, oh yes! yes.